How's it going everyone? It's Sam. Today we get to do a fun video. Every once in a while I like to take a look at the various Bitcoin wealth levels. Like how much Bitcoin does it really take to be wealthy uh, in terms of Bitcoin, right? Not some arbitrary dollar number, but actual Bitcoin. Like what does it mean to be in the top 1% of people on earth? What does it mean to be in the top 1% of the current Bitcoin holders? Or what will make you rich one day? Now, of course, we have to take some assumptions into account here, but stay through to the end of the video. This is a fun one. I love doing these videos. We're going to go through it uh, and hit subscribe if you want to see future videos like this. I do this every once in a while. There are going to be links underneath the video as well to Margex. In case you want to start trading cryptocurrency on leverage, you can try it over on Margex. There's no KYC. You don't need a VPN. So you can start trading today. This is kind of an interesting setup too. We got rejected several times, then we broke out above this trend line, and now we're retesting it, and it looks like we're moving back up. So this could be pretty bullish. There's also a link down there to CoinW, which is a platform that I also use. There's no KYC. You can buy spot cryptocurrency, so you can just buy cryptos there, or you can trade on leverage there as well. And there's also a link right under the CoinW link that's going to be to a special group that we just created with CoinW to uh, help you trade. It's a trading group that gives signals, it gives information and education, it tells you what's happening in the market right now. So definitely check that out. And last thing, there's a link to HGA or HG Access. You can become a free member there. We're talking about giving some free alpha to people on there as well. Now, We've seen the Bitcoin ETFs continuously buying up Bitcoin. And like, I just want to hit on this before we go into the various wealth levels, because you can see there are a lot of people that did not have access to Bitcoin before that are buying Bitcoin through iBit. There are a lot of people selling their GBTC, putting into iBit and putting into other uh, trusts as well and uh, other ETFs. And right now there's like there's just a significant amount of volatility because of this. Now, overall, we're still seeing a lot of net buying right? Grayscale's dumping Bitcoin. They've actually lost 45% of their Bitcoin since January. And this is actually the largest outflows that we've seen year to date from all of the US listed ETFs. So there's a lot of FUD right now because they've been selling a lot the last three or four days. But they've been selling since the ETFs were approved and Grayscale continues to buy up the, uh, the supply. And of course, they're buying it with wealthy individuals, you can buy it if you're um, a poor individual as well. You can go on uh, Fidelity or BlackRock or whatever site you use to buy uh, assets and you can go buy $5 worth or a dollar worth or whatever. But the majority is probably being bought by the wealthy. That's what we continue to see from Bitcoin is that the whales continue to buy significant amounts. They typically out trade the smaller entities and you can see like Mr. 100 continuously buying uh, you can see just today they bought 303 or 304 Bitcoin and yeah, they're up almost $2 billion from these, this buying and they've just been accumulating and buying, buying, buying more and more since the beginning of last year. Well, actually since the end of 2022, they've been buying a significant amount. Now, I think that's why it's important to go through like different Bitcoin rich lists or the Bitcoin wealth levels, because if you are bullish on Bitcoin, well, you don't have a ton of time. Like we've already moved up 4x from the bottom. I know some people get pissed off because, you know, some YouTubers, myself included, will say like, oh, you have 24 hours, you have 72 hours, you have seven days. And the reason we do that is to instill a little bit of uh, what's the right word, instill a little bit of timeliness, like make you try to buy sometime soon instead of putting it off because in the bear market it seems like we have all the time all the time in the world right we stayed around 17,000 19,000 for months and months it was super boring and it felt like we could buy forever at that level and then we move up now it seems like oh well bitcoin's not doing anything these etfs are buying but it's just staying at the same level not really i mean it's up 30 percent in the last 30 days so if you weren't timely if you weren't getting off your butt to go buy some bitcoin well, you missed out on a 30% pump. If you miss it right now, we could be at $80,000 by the end of next month or the beginning of next month. Who knows? So 
That's why it is important to make sure that you're actually paying attention, make sure that you have some goals, even if they're arbitrary. Kind of like when you go into the weight room and maybe you're bench pressing and you bench press 95 pounds over and over and over. You can't get 100, but your goal is 100. Now, does everything change when you hit 100 pounds? No, it's probably not even noticeable. But once you do that, once you're able to bench press 100 pounds, then you can move on to the next goal and you feel some self-confidence. You feel like you hit a goal even if it is arbitrary, which is why I do like to look at Bitcoin stacking goals and Bitcoin wealth. Like what does it take to be better, uh, a better stacker than the average person on earth? And we can go through those numbers. So let's start here. There are 8 billion people on earth, give or take, and we're going to say there's 16 million Bitcoin. Now, I say 16 million. I fully know that there's going to be 21 million and there's 19.6 million right now. But a lot has been lost. Like on the, in the early days, a lot of people didn't secure their Bitcoin correctly or they sent it to the wrong addresses. That still happens today. And I think that accounts for a lot uh, of Bitcoin. We're going to say about three and a half million. I think it could even be more than that. But we're going to assume that there's about three and a half Bitcoin lost right now. There's going to be five million Bitcoin lost overall. Eight billion people. That means that the average person on earth can have 0.002 Bitcoin. Problem is there's not that much Bitcoin that's left that's being like sold. A lot of people buy Bitcoin and they haven't sold it in a very long time. The amount of Bitcoin on exchanges is much closer to about 2 million Bitcoin, which means that the next level, uh, well, the first level would be 0. 0.00025 Bitcoin. Like that's what you would have to get as an average person on earth with how much Bitcoin is left on exchanges. If you say, no, I want an equal cut of all the Bitcoin that's left in the world, you need 0.002. So that's like the first and the second level. Now, what would that be equal to right now? Well, at $65,000, that would be about $130 worth of Bitcoin at this time. It could get more expensive. Now, I think another level after this is obviously like $1,000, get $1,000 because that's another round number, but a $10,000 mark is significant for Bitcoin. So $10,000 is another significant level because you have five figures in Bitcoin. At this time, that would be about, let's see, about 0.15 Bitcoin. This is about what a lot of people hold for emergency funds. Like let's say you have a house or a car, maybe you hold this amount just in case there's some problem with it or you have a family in case someone loses their job or is out of work for a little bit or has to take a pay cut, something like that. So moving that into a better money, a better store of value, I think is another significant level, another significant amount of Bitcoin. And it's very close to actually the next level, which is 0.2 Bitcoin. The reason I bring this up is this is the 1% level. Like if you take a look at the 8 billion people in the world and look at the top 1%, obviously there are 80 million people. That's 80 million divided by 8 billion, that's 1%, right? So the top 1%, uh, if they all bought the amount of Bitcoin that's available, 16 million Bitcoin, and they bought it evenly, which again, isn't possible because there are people that own 100,000 Bitcoin, uh, 50,000 Bitcoin, 5,000 Bitcoin. But let's say they're, that it's all available. The top 1%, they could only buy about 0.2 Bitcoin. Now, a lot of people will say like the millionaires in the world could buy 0.28 Bitcoin because basically they look at, uh, there's been reports that there are about 60,000, uh, sorry, 60 million millionaires in the world. I'd say that's probably closer to 80 million now, especially because of inflation. A lot of assets are at all time highs. So this actually works out to be pretty close, like 80 million millionaires, 80 million is the top 1%. So the top 1% in the world are millionaires now. They could only buy 0.2 Bitcoin. Now, of course, not everyone's going to do that. But if we distributed all the Bitcoin, that's how it would work out. Now, this is also really interesting. This is the Bitcoin distribution by addresses. There's a lot of information here. But basically, it shows you the balance of different Bitcoin addresses. It shows you the number of addresses. It shows you the percentage of total addresses. It shows you the total Bitcoin that all those addresses hold. It shows you the dollar value and then the percent of Bitcoin out of the total. Okay, a lot of information there. So if you want to be part of the 1% of Bitcoin holders, let's say every single wallet is a different person, which it's not. A lot of people have 
two wallets, five wallets, 10 wallets, but let's say every single wallet is a different person. If you held one Bitcoin or more, you would be in the top 1.9% of wallet addresses, one of the 1.92% of people that own Bitcoin. Now, a lot of Bitcoins held on exchanges too, that doesn't necessarily show up in here, but just take this for what it is. If you want to be in the top 1%, you'd probably need two to three Bitcoin, my guess is, because again, one to 10 is about 2%. I would assume that about half of those wallets have two or three Bitcoin or less, and then half of them have two or three Bitcoin or more. Now, what would that look like? Well, to own about three Bitcoin, you need about $200,000. Now, another way you could look at it is there are about 46 million addresses with one dollar or more if you're if you have a hundred thousand dollars worth of bitcoin you're in the top six hundred and thirty seven thousand addresses so you would be almost in the one percent right there with a hundred thousand again that's pretty close to these numbers here i mean one bitcoin sixty five thousand dollars now put in the top two percent so that's like the next goal is probably whole coiner status then maybe two to three Bitcoin would put you in the top 1% of Bitcoin addresses out there, which is a significant milestone. And then the next milestone is probably just like enough to retire or be very close to retirement. Now that's gonna look different for everyone, but let's say we get to a $200,000 Bitcoin this next bull run, well, five Bitcoin would get you at a million dollars. And even that you could, I mean, you could take that out of the market if you want to sell or if you want to take Part of it out of the market and you could put it into something that will grow over time that's a little bit less volatile if you wanted otherwise you're looking at maybe 10 to 15 bitcoin to retire if you're looking at two to three million dollars so that's something to consider right uh that would be the next level and then obviously like if you have 10 bitcoin 100 bitcoin you can just go down the list like those are significant levels as well now let me know your thoughts on this underneath the video i know i gave you a lot of stuff and i didn't like specifically show like, okay, this is level one, this is level two, this is level three. But I think you can pretty much get an idea for what I'm talking about. Basically, if you wanted an equal distribution of the Bitcoin that's left on exchanges, which is maybe 2 million, you divide that by 8 billion people, you need about 0 0.0002 Bitcoin or about $13. If you wanted an equal amount of all the Bitcoin between the 8 billion people, you need about 0 0.002 Bitcoin Keep in mind, a lot of that is held by larger entities, so you would be above the average person if you got that amount. And then you can start looking at $1,000. You can start looking at specific levels like having $10,000 worth of Bitcoin or 0.2 Bitcoin because that's about how much the top 1% of people on earth would ever be able to buy if it's widely distributed. If you want to be part of the 1% of Bitcoin addresses, you need about two to three Bitcoin. And then from there, you know, you're looking at people that are really wealthy. Maybe you want to hit 10 Bitcoin. Maybe you want to hit 20 Bitcoin. And then, you know, you can play around with the numbers because they're a bit arbitrary at that point. You're going to do well. You can probably do whatever you want. Of course, do your own due diligence. Let me know your thoughts on this underneath the video. Again, not like a super serious video that's going to really change how you trade, but maybe give you some goals to stack that can help you create a more fine financially uh, beneficial picture or a more beneficial um, portfolio down the road. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Again, you can check out the links to Marjex and to CoinW and to HG Access as well underneath the video. I'll see you in the next one.